month we've been talking about honor and we've been talking about a major hindrance to honor which is the spirit of offense and so if you remember we've talked about the fact that offense we started by just talking about the fact that offense is a trap that the enemy uses to sabotage our destiny uh, and we also learned that no human or demon can ever get you out of the will of god and then last week we talked about the the whole idea of letting go and letting god you know there's something interesting that has been happening as we've been talking about uh this someone series on no offense i discovered that i take offense so easily and then now that we're doing this someone series i'm annoyed that i am not even i mean taking offense is not the way to go oh, you're an, you're taking offense that you can't take offense <laughs> I'm annoyed that I can't take offense because the reality is that it's a lot easier to have a anger, bitterness yeah. um, against somebody, but there is some joy in in harboring anger and and resentment. It's yeah. it's easier to do that than to uh, than not to take offense. I think we're going to talk about a bit about that today because I really feel like this last week, the message that we preached, I feel was the next level. Yeah. Because we talked about the secret of turning curses into blessings. Many times the issue that causes it to be so hard, why you feel like that pleasure of holding a grudge, mm -hmm. is because of the issue of justice. Yeah. And forgiveness many times feels like you're playing a part in the injustice. Last week we learned about treating your enemy well. Yeah. You know, Jesus says, do good to those who love you. You know, love your enemies. I think that's why Jesus' story is so, so crazy. When you think about it, when he was framed, he was set up, he was tortured, he was abused. He was put through this false trial. He was humiliated. He was stripped naked. I mean, and what does he do in the most excruciating pain you can ever be through? He, 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 he cries out. And he cries out, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. He's actually letting them off the hook while they're still doing it. He's blessing those who are hurting him yeah. while they're doing it. Yeah. God tells us this is how we turn curses into blessing. We're going to talk a bit about that today as we yeah. go on. You know, letting go, when we tell people let go, it's something that uh, you, you will hear from human psychology, you will read about in self-help book. In fact, uh, you know, you'll hear a hu humanist saying, let go of the negative energy. But when we talk about blessing, you know, you can forgive and let go. But the whole idea of blessing somebody who has been mean to you, somebody who has offended you, I mean, that just takes it to another level. If you actually put yourself in that story and you hear the things Jesus says, you'll be like, what? Like, really? Jesus said that many of us would have been where the Pharisees were. You've heard it said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. I tell you, do not resist an evil person. Wow. That's now Matthew 5, 28. And then he says, if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn your left one. Uh, then he says about, if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give them your shirt as well. The things Jesus taught don't seem practical. And so this last week then we began to talk a bit about how do we actually get to that place. Oh. When I just release you and let you go, that's good. Because then I'm not carried into that bitterness. Mm. But when I do good to you, something changes. Yeah. It moves from just a neutral stance yeah. into a proactive kingdom stance. So how do we do wow. that? So the first step we talked about was trust God. It says, don't say I will get even for this is wrong. Wait for the Lord to handle the matter. The second principle we talked about was stay focused on your purpose. God has a purpose for you in every situation he's put you in. And what you're saying is that basically when, when there is offense to understand that there is an enemy and it might it's not necessarily that person. Yes. Number, Number three, yeah. which is now where it now goes into the supernatural realm. Yeah. Repay evil with good. First Peter 3 9. Do not repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, Pay them back with a blessing. I like that. Yeah. I want to just, uh, uh, as we're coming to an end, with a challenge that we gave on Sunday. And I want to challenge you to do it this week. And that is to bless the person who offended you. Find a way to sabotage the enemy's work yeah. and bless the person who offended you. Now, we've talked about uh, recognizing and admitting the pain. So those things are still valid. Bringing the heart to God. Uh, choosing your confidence wisely. Letting go and letting God. All those things are powerful and important. But we're just adding this last one. I think it's the one that tips the scale and makes this a spiritual work that only God can achieve, which is do good to that person. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Family Night. Uh, we're so, so glad you guys are here with us on Facebook mainly. Uh, we're having a bit of a technical issue, but we're hoping to be able to resolve that quickly so we can get this on YouTube. And worst comes to worst, we'll be able to put up the recording right after this. Uh, but hey, we have a special family night today. It's, uh, it's actually a, it's a public holiday in Kenya. Yeah. 
and so we decided not to do it at the Hill City Campus. We're actually uh, hosting family night uh, out in the suburbs of Nairobi. That's right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> hey, hey, uh, today with me, uh, host co-hosting family night with me is the effervescent, the <laughs> powerful, the woman of God, wow. the mother of nations. Uh, please give it up for Pastor Angie. Woo! Hi everyone, it's so nice to be here, Pastor M. This fire is amazing. <laughs> I love it here. Yeah. You guys were in the leafy suburbs of Karen That's at Pastor are. M's home, yeah. enjoying this beautiful fire. The public holiday, I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, if you have any members of your DG who are uh, not able to, who are waiting for YouTube, just let them know. Let them know. Put it on your discipleship yep. group. Uh, What's up? Tell them we're on Facebook for now. Uh, but we're going to be maybe in another hour or so. We hope to upload to YouTube as soon as we're able to get that sorted yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, welcome to Family Night. And hey, if you're if you're a visitor, uh, we're so glad. Uh, family Night is a time when we, as a Mavuno family, we're able to come together every week and just receive instruction from God's word, kind of reflect on what God is teaching us as a community. Yeah. And what a powerful time it's been for us as we've gone through it every week with our discipleship groups. It's a time when our discipleship groups, uh, afterwards, they meet and they have conversations about what they're learning mm. and so really really exciting and hey uh, for those of you who are part of a discipleship group uh, let us know where you're checking in tell us what your discipleship group is i can see there's quite a few of you already uh, on uh <laughs> facebook uh jano mondi mutave nelly pastor angie these are my friends because your friends are too young to be on uh facebook they're well, all on it's instagram true, it's true. Uh, henry olero <laughs> Pastor Milton, Pastor Milton is my age, that's why he's here. Sorry guys, no, peace, peace, peace. I'm not, I'm not calling you old. Uh, Philip is here as well. Uh, so great to see every single... Steve Kibiro so is here good. as well. Rehab Mumbi from Ignite. Emmanuel Adele is here. Mavuno Kampala, it's great to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Janet Mashulam from Hill, Hill City. Uh, glad to be here. Ja Okwala, Brian Oko representing DG001 Mashariki Network. Oh, Ma Michael Onen from Mavuno Kampala, He's fresh. There. I've seen it, yeah. yeah I've seen it. some people, even there's someone from Kasarani, Dokas Washuka is there. We have Naomi from Seekers DG. Uh, we have Catherine Wakuze, Eden DG and Mashariki. I love it. Mashariki nice. guys are well represented. represented. I can see Pastor Sheiks is in the house. Mm -hmm. I love Sheiks. it. And we have um, Washara again from Kampala. I hope I said that correct. Yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah from Kampala. I, can I see love Pastor it. Pastor Kelvin Mugambi from Oyakiwe is in the house. And then Emmanuel Odera from Mavuno South, representing Mavuno South. Whoop, whoop. Uh, he says, who hit the link? I know. He's like, you guys don't want us to get be fast on YouTube. I think he was I'm waiting you, to be first. Plan. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so meet Walia from Limitless DG, Mavuno uh, downtown. And then Phoebe Wahiga as well. That's right. It's great to see all these people. Dorcas, Washuka. Guys, I've remembered where their Facebook account is. I know. You, this is our face. I'm seeing a lot of YouTubers here as well today. Uh, welcome, guys. It's great to have you in the house. I just want to tell uh, the Oderas not to take offense. There is no, there's no hidden agenda. There's no hidden, there's agenda. No hidden plan. We're just taking over from them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Wow, I can see Carol Uta from Nyeri County. Come yeah. On. And then Googie George from Mavuno Kampala Blossoms DG. And then Parsi says we had to download the app. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor is a millennial. And she's even there with tears. How, how is this that I had to even learn what Facebook is to be <laughs> family night today? Sorry for the torture and just thank you for your faithfulness to actually download Facebook and even get an account so you can be <laughs> in on today. So, wow. My goodness. Uh, 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 Yemi also says we're wondering what was going on. So, guys, yeah, like we said, there's a bit of a technical issue, but don't worry. Uh, we'll be able to put this up later on YouTube as soon as we get an opportunity. But for now, today, we're still live. Yeah. The show must go on. The show must go on. We don't stop on. for nothing. We still go on despite, you know, the enemy doesn't want I know. this stuff out there. But we're like, we're, we're still doing it. We're still doing it. We're still doing it. We're going to be out here. Yeah. So, Pastor Angie, how are you doing? I'm um, well. I enjoyed the day today with my family. It was my son's birthday and nice. my brother's birthday. Happy birthday. Awesome. And it's just been a good day with family. And then the family asked you to preach. Yes, the family asked me to preach last minute. So, I dashed from <laughs> Lovington to get here. In fact, I'm like, Pastor Carol, where are the marshmallows? Marshmallows. Yeah, so yeah, I'm so posh. Eh? We're African. We do maize. Roast roasted maize. Roast, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sweet potatoes, not marshmallows. Pastor Angie, what is this? Who's in Pastor Angie's DJ, uh, WhatsApp group of marshmallows? Look, look, I said, do you know what marshmallows are even? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I met someone who it's ate one for the first time the other day. I was so tickled. Are you serious? Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, let's talk about sweet potatoes just so we can be inclusive here and make sure that we're not leaving anyone. And some roasted maize. Yeah, roasted maize. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I think we can hook up some roast maize for Pastor Angie after yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited about today. So you had a good day. Yeah, I, I had, had a good day as well. And my shop, my highlight today was uh, we had a special workout at the gym. Uh huh. That was of dying. You know, public <laughs> holiday they just load you up. And so, my goodness, I'm still feeling the energy from it. Uh, so you had to run for two miles, uh, which is about three, three something kilometers. And then you had to do 100 pull-ups, 200 sit-ups, and 300 um, squats. And you're here today. You're like still I'm alive. alive. Yeah. You know, like I'm alive. But I'm healthy. I feel good. That's good. So I'm really, really happy. I would have been dead. I would have called you and told you to do the meeting by yourself. <laughs> But let me just tell you, it, I, yeah, I, I'm still even shocked that I managed to do it. That's amazing. Yeah, but that was, it's really been my highlight. My, I also hung out with my family. We had my dad and my mom. It's my dad's birthday. Oh, no way. So it's amazing, like our, our relatives okay. share birthdays. So today is my dad's birthday. So we had a small, I uh, just called him over with his uh, with my mom and some of my family members and we just sang happy birthday that's so cool yeah, i bought him a chocolate cake next year next year to pange pamoja yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 i know and he's 84. oh so, wow yeah, yeah so it was a special birthday that must have been so much fun absolutely so w welcome to family night and uh please keep telling us where you're hanging out from uh and uh phoebe says lovely fire wish you were here phoebe just to experience it uh, i can see esther saying i'm here Pasi. come on uh, love, love this. Uh, so good to see you guys. Mavuno Lifeway is in the house now. They are late. You know Mavuno Lifeway, they are all, I know. They're all YouTubers. They're not Facebookers. In so. fact, Dokas is saying we're in denial. They're in denial. <laughs> they're on be, Facebook. Some Facebook. of them have to get to their mom and ask, oh, can I use your phone so I can get onto Facebook? Because you don't even know how to use Facebook. But we're Later. glad you're here. We're glad you're here. So, okay, so uh, let's just rock right in. Mm. Uh, first of all, just to say, uh, for everybody who's watching this, remember we have a very special event coming up uh, on the 7th to the 10th of July, it, and this is what we call the Fearless Summit. Yeah, I'm excited. And it's going to be uh, just a one, oh, those once a year events, we don't repeat that. It's a phenomenal time. If you've never come to Fearless, then you don't, I don't know what you're, I don't even know what you're doing. It's like, it's, it's that thing you don't want to miss. Mm. And this year, our, our, our theme is limitless. So we're just talking about how do we move from passion to become movement leaders. Yeah. Because that's what God is calling every one of us to be. Yeah. So it's going to be, I mean, they're great speakers, but more than that, I just, I'm expecting a showdown with the Holy Spirit. Uh, every time Mavuno family gathers nowadays, there's just something crazy that happens. Things just go out of the roof. And so I'm really expecting some fun, fun stuff. So 7th to the 10th, uh, please book it out of July. Book it in your calendar if you haven't yet. We have a, we have a, we've had a, this this thing called uh, Ali Bad. Yes, Ali Bad offer. Which I don't think it works for Africans. Because Africans, I don't I think they're just such last minuteers. <laughs> but I have to say congratulations to Mavuno Church. Because I know that at least the last time I checked, there were over 200 people who had paid yeah, in the Ali yeah. Bad offer. I mean, I think we're reforming Africa's reputation. That's right. Uh, but right now, I think the Ali Bad offer moved from... 250 uh, uh, USD. Uh, no, is, is it 250 USD? 2,500? No, 25, 25 USD. 25. To I think now it's at 30. Okay. So it's still an early bad offer because it's about to shoot up to 35. Okay. And so this is the time. If you haven't yet, join those 200 serious Africans who are like, you know what, we plan ahead. We don't wait for the last minute to see what's happening and then we're like, okay, we're in. So just make the time, ask the time from work, time off from work, uh, 7th to the 10th. And it's just going to be an I know it's going to be amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the theme is ex like amazing. I've seen the lineup of speakers, yeah. so I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Yeah. So make sure you're here. And then the 10th, we're going to have a family service Yay. at Hill City. It's going to be the first time we're trying to do this. Every Mavuno campus that's accessible and all the people who come for Fearless from all over the world, we're going to have one big service and we're going to beam it uh, to all our campuses. Yeah. And so that's going to be really special. It's going to be an exciting service. It's going to be special. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, yeah. So, I, uh, by the way, for those of you whose relatives are on YouTube and <laughs> and they cannot access their mother to borrow her, her Facebook account, tell them YouTube is now up. Yeah. Uh, we've finally been able to resolve. Our technical team has been working overtime um. and we're able to resolve this. So, awesome. Yep. Awesome. Pastor Angie, I'll leave you on, on Facebook with your people. Oh, we moved to YouTube I'm to the shady one. <laughs> No, there's nothing shady. <laughs> Nobody calling you people. <laughs> so let me. I'll Pastor Godi, I to, see to you. Welcome, guys. Oh, and he might abandon us since he's Pastor, had YouTube. Pastor, is Pastor up. Godi, yeah. Pastor Godi is not a is not a Facebooker. <laughs> so so yeah. So it's so exciting. I mean, I'm excited uh, to to also just uh, jump into today's topic. Yeah. You know, 
Uh, and let me just say, first of all, I'm not going to give numbers for free the future. I always give numbers every week. And I think it's part, part of the reason I won't give it is just because, boy, yeah. uh, it's just been that day. Mm. But let me just say, every week, more and more people are come, yeah. are joining our fast fruits campaign. And more and more people future. are taking that risk of faith. Uh, and you know what? I, one of the things I, I, I want to just say about whenever, whenever we have a campaign like Free the Future, because what we're really saying is we're challenging every member of our church to do two things. Mm. Number one, to give a gift of faith equivalent to one month's salary to mm. God's work, building God's house, which is actually paying off the mortgage of our Hill City campus. Yeah. It's a campaign and we're, taking the whole, we're asking the whole Mavuno uh, to, be part about, to, to be part of this. But number two, we're saying that we're trusting God that we will all be out of debt. Yeah. Now for me, Pastor Angie, I don't know about you, but for me, I've come to understand that some, of, some things happen spiritually. Yeah. Sometimes I wait for God to sort out my debt so I can sort out his house. And God says, sort out my house and I'll then, sort out your Yeah, wallet. that's actually how it And works. maybe there's somebody here who's been thinking, you know what, God, I've got so many issues. Let me first sort out my issues and then one day I can look after your business. Mm. But I want to challenge you to take a step of faith because maybe the thing that is limiting your ability to even free your own future is that you're not en engaging in God's work. And I think one of the things that I, I remember just talking from the book of Haggai, uh, this little known book in the, in, in the Old Testament, yes. where God talks about the fact that, hey, how can you be about your business and my house lies in ruins yeah and he told israel you sort out my house and let me sort out your house and i really believe that there are many of us uh, who are that place maybe the, the, there's some of us who are in that space of fear of how do i in a time of uncertainty because you know this year doesn't seem like it's getting more and more certain it yeah. seems less and less certain yeah but i've also come to understand there's something called a divine economy and that i don't that that divine economy is not apprehended by doing the the, the rational thing it's done through obedience and so I, I want to just encourage everybody in this in this chat, if you're in this space, if you're not yet uh, part of Free the Future, if you've not yet made your commitment, that you will do so, and then you will take the step of faith and just begin to take that risk. Mm. And I want to just say that I'm trusting God that by this year we will all be able to testify and say God is faithful. He is. God is able. Yeah, and yeah. we've received that word, Pastor. And I think I love it because it's an opportunity for us to engage with the word of God and yeah. to see God doing it for us. Amen. So I'm excited. I think for everybody who wants to engage, who will engage, they will see themselves in their future this year. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Awesome. So hey, uh, for those of you who are just joining us on YouTube, I can see several of us are already on YouTube. Yes, YouTube is finally up. Sorry for those of you who are joining right now and just apologies that it took a while to get our, our staff uh, together. Uh, please let your discipleship group members know. Let everybody you know know like, hey, we're on. Family night is on and uh, we're live and we're rocking and this is out in the leafy suburbs <laughs> uh, we're out as you can tell we're not a hill city yeah. uh, but the reason for those who are not <laughs> in kenya is because today is a public holiday it's madaraka day it's a day of self-governance that yeah. we celebrate every year in kenya and so when we decided rather than going to the office and working from mavuno hill city today would actually do it from the home. comfort of home i love it yeah and it's beautiful in fact i was like we should do this every every we should week, do it every week eh? it's beautiful <laughs> and get some marshmallows yeah, 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 yeah. and some roast meals and some potatoes <laughs> i accept <laughs> so so let's move to honor we've been talking about honor yeah and uh this has just been the theme this is a word that god has given us as a word in season mm. for mavuno in this time and uh we we began this conversation early in the year and we've just that's what we god has just been hammering 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 and this season we switched and flipped it to here's something that could keep us from honoring here's yeah. a major and by the way every time we've spoken about this i've been convinced more and more that this was god's word it was and i have to just give credit to pastor angie and say she's the one who just hammered this to us as a mm. team and said we need to t talk about offense uh because this is a huge issue that ke is keeping god's people from understanding how to honor and receive the blessing yeah. of honor. and so thank you pastor angie publicly Amen. Amen. uh for just listening to the holy spirit thank and you. guiding us in this way yeah. and so we've been going through this series we've talked about the fact that offense keeps many from destiny yeah. the trap the <laughs> enemy uses offense to keep many from destiny We've talked about the fact that no human or demon can get you out of the will of God. I love it. So when people offend you, here's perspective. Just yeah. understanding that nobody will ever be able to keep you from offense. That's right. Uh, fr from God's will. Accept yourself. Yes. When you choose to take offense, then you actually are the one who keeps yourself from what God wants. I think that but was... But regardless of what they do, they can't knock you out of God's will. That was the, my favorite take out of the season. There is nothing, no human, no demon that can yeah. keep you out of God's will. Yeah. Once that you get that, your perspective shifts in terms of yeah things may be happening to me but 
it just depends on how I respond into this response. situation. Then yeah. that will allow either God to move or hinder the move of God from my life. Absolutely. It really changed my perspective. Love it. Yeah. Love it. We talked about letting go. We looked at uh, just the fact that, mm. you know, sometimes offense comes from authority figures, father figures and father wounds and how those keep us from uh, being who God wants us to be. But then we began to understand, my goodness, there's something that comes when we let go and let God. Yeah. And that's what we learned from the example of David. And, and I think God was really challenging us. There are some things we can't control. Uh, but when you let God and you let go, he's able to come and take over yes. and heal. And then we took it to the next level. We learned about the secret of turning. That, for me, that was my, my favorite, by the way. Uh, the secret of turning curses into blessing. And it was I think your that's favorite what we and it was my hardest. Week. It was the hardest for you. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, let me tell you why it was my favorite. It's because I feel I finally understood as we just dived into God's word. Mm. How countercultural God's the way Jesus works. If Jesus told us to just do what the motivational speakers everywhere are telling us, yeah. you know, just work harder, just do your thing. Mm. You know what? It doesn't work. But Jesus tells us to do something completely opposite. He just tells us, you know what? Love your enemies. He does. Do good to those who hate you. I mean, how else will they know you're my disciples? And how else will you create room for God? Yeah. You know, it's not this thing of I'm stronger than you. Let me just take the, hard, the higher way. No, 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 no. It's like, look, you know what? I'm going to actually do you good because I have a God who's able to cover over your offense. Mm. And because God does me good every time I yeah, sin and yeah, I offend him. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I mean, for me, it, that's been just a, a radical thought. I think for me it's been the hardest because it's the part where I've wrestled with myself the most. I've wrestled with what I feel with justice. I mean, justice comes easy. So when you have to fight yourself, fight your feelings, uh, which is to wish somebody harm, to pray for their jaw to break. Me, I'm, I resonate with, the, <laughs> with what David when he writes those psalms. I'm yeah. like, yeah, pray for, pray, pray for those wicked people. But now to actually bless them, um, I find that m my heart, my soul was fighting and so I did it out of obedience because yeah. I, I love Jesus and and I want to to fully become who, who he desires for me to be I mean I have seen my heart change in the season after obedience yeah. but it's it's my hardest sermon yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, you know that I was at your church on Sunday yeah and I heard you preach a sermon where you gave some powerful personal yeah. examples huh? And I was like, yeah, for sure. You've you've lived this. Uh, you've lived this talk. I have lived this sermon. I remember one time I, I I mentioned on Sunday we we were at a staff meeting. Uh, one time I I was engaged and uh, the person cheated on me was the hardest thing ever. And I couldn't believe it because I'm a child of God. I'm on internship. I want to serve Jesus. You know. Yeah. Sweet innocent so you child. Look, you need you need to be looked after. Yeah. Right? Then this happens and my heart is broken and then I'm not processing it by myself. I was processing with the whole church, 300 people, only 300 at the time. So that overwhelmed me because everyone would come on Sunday and ask me how I'm feeling, and I just was overwhelmed. And then I I happened to tell Pastor M. Uh, I feel God leading me to wash this person's feet. The lady, not the yes. guy. So then Pastor M said, actually, the person is coming because we're doing a healing session. I said, what? No, not today. Like I said, one day in the future. <laughs> and then he said, let's do it today. And I broke down and then the person came. I was shivering. I told you, let me run away. So they held me so that I don't escape. I remember. <laughs> and then we washed the feet and I cried. It was not pretty. It was the those ugly cries. You, oh, it was those ugly, <laughs> those ugly cries. I cried and out of obedience did it and then I went home and slept because it was the hardest thing I ever had to do and then I realized later it really is about about obedience and then my heart changed until now I wish them well like the story we read of the Naman slave girl I wish them well now um, but it um, it took time yeah. it took a whole process I ended up working with her and being her boss and then we had another fight <laughs> that was such yeah. a powerful story Pastor Angie and I feel for me the part that really just was, of course, as you went through injustice, how do I bless somebody yeah. who has hurt me? How do I... So the feelings are not consonant with what you're doing. Yes. But I remember as you now talked about how you love your hubby. Yes. You love the life God has allowed you to go through. You love who you've become mm. today. And I looked at it and I said, yeah, in, it didn't make sense then. But when I see you now, it's like years later. Yes, you know. Yeah. It, I wouldn't wish what you went through on anyone. At all. But there's something that it did to you and in you and through you. I think I'm a better person for it. I think the person I'm with now is everything. Um, and just God has blessed my life out of this 
walk of obedience. Yeah. But at that point, it was the most painful thing to do. Um, but I, I pray for many in our churches. I mean, I believe that at South and even I, in all our campuses this season, that just breakthrough was happening, that chains were being broken, things that were limiting you now, you're beginning to feel limitless, that we literally were freeing our future yeah. as we let go of people and let go of offense. We could walk into the destinies that God desired for wow. us. Yeah. You know, for me, why again, why it was my favorite sermon is because it moved away from, I'll do it because of obedience. Yeah. And it moved me to the place where I'm pouring hot coals on the enemy's head. Oh, it yes. became an act of spiritual warfare. So, it, it, you know, when you're in warfare, sometimes it doesn't make sense. But it's like, if this is going to hurt the enemy, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And the enemy is not this person who offended me. Yeah. It's the one who caused this person to offend me. And so it gives me, and maybe I'm just that militant person, at least give me something to fight. <laughs> give me something to hit. I hear you. And if you're telling me the enemy is not my spouse, the enemy is not this person who's caused me pain, it's the one behind them. Uh -huh. You're giving me the tools. It's like I just felt that someone opened my eyes to see I can fight back. I can hit the enemy. Because what I'm doing when I fight my spouse, when I'm fighting, it's like I'm hurting the wrong person. That's right. And the, the enemy wins, wins, wins. So I think that's why it liberated me so much because I was like, yes, I'll do good. Because if anything I can do to ashamed the devil and his plans, yeah. yes, let's do it. I love it. Let's do it. Yeah. So I think it, it's not to say it made it easier, but I think it gave me a bigger picture. Beautiful. That's what I'd say. Mm. Yeah. So, so hey, uh, this past week we now talk, started talking, I mean, we did a prayer service, yeah. which was quite something. Um, I mean, it was just fun to uh, watch you lead prayer. I led on the online church. Uh, just leading people, we did it together with you, just leading people into freedom. And I, we, had, we had some powerful videos, uh, powerful Those were testimonies, powerful testimonies. Uh, of people who have struggled <coughs> with offense and, yeah. and, and let go, mm. you know, and just let go. It just was so real. And it was three, three. Uh, it was really a family service, so we had people, we had a testimony with, with father wounds, yeah. just people Parent who had been yeah. parents. Uh, then we had one of spouse, mm. you know, uh, spouse wounds, and that one was just, it blew my mind. And then we had one that had to do community. with the community wounding us. So by the way, if you didn't get to watch the service, you can actually go on the Mavuno Church Org uh, page, uh, YouTube, and you'll be able to see last Sunday service. It was, it was mind-blowing. It was amazing. Um, so yeah, so maybe let's talk, let's just process that a bit because yeah. people are going to be talking about that in discipleship. I love today. it. And uh, yeah, parents, parent <laughs> issues. I mean, you you come from a perfect family. So well, I not don't perfect. Think, I don't think you would, I don't think you'd understand this father wound. Yes, I don't thing. understand that yeah, so well. It's not but something you've experienced personally. I haven't experienced it personally. I think the one. I think that the. Though I understand how the voice of a parent or the voice of somebody in authority can, um, the words they spoke over you or the actions they, they did to you can be embedded in you. And so they become part of your identity, whether it's abandonment, whether it's some sort of insecurity that you take on because of words they spoke to you. And then because African parents especially find it hard to say, I'm sorry, <laughs> those wounds can stay there. And, and, and then in the story we watched, this guy, the father passed, and so he never even had an opportunity for closure yeah. and never got to have that conversation. So how do you overcome these wounds? So just praying together and removing those arrows. I think it's Pastor Carl who told us, taught us to remove those arrows uh, of words or things that people spoke over you that hurt you and remove them and say, this is no longer who I am. My identity is with God, my father, who wants to relate to me as a good father. Um, and so I loved the experience, the opportunity. I think at South there was something that happened. Remember Pastor Jade came up and said, there are also wounds by in-laws. Yes. That we had know. never, parents, we, we hadn't even considered that they may have spoken some things or done some things. You may have gone in expecting to be welcomed and instead you are shunned, you're maybe persecuted and just removing those arrows or wounds or things they've done maybe to sabotage your marriage uh, or things they've said over you. So I really loved those prayers and just um, removing those arrows from people. Yeah. You know, for me, um, like I had great parents, I had great parents, but I think what happens with parents sometimes is, especially if you've got parents who are, <laughs> who are strong mm. in their personality. So my mom is a choleric and so am I. And I feel like many people talk about father wounds. I think I had mother wounds and it's not yeah. because she was a bad parent or she cut me down. She, she was a believer. Uh, she protected us. She was a mama bear. I mean, I remember her protecting us. Uh, and just being very protective over her children. But I think because she had such a strong will. Yeah. And when you want to do this, it's like, no, this is how you do it. 
she overrode many of our decisions. So I think I just got to a place where I ended up as a teenager just pushing mm. away and really pushing away from my family. Not just in a sense to protect myself. Yeah. And it was interesting, it's marriage that showed me that I had mother wounds because I, I stayed away and I was, it, you know, when you're away from home, you can now go at your own. Mm. <laughs> it's comfortable. You go in and when it gets uncomfortable, you leave. Uh, but I think it's my wife who helped me begin to see, I think you have issues. Uh, when, when you start talking about your mom, I see some, some feelings. Mm, Imagine. <laughs> and I remember just uh, at the time uh, when Pastor Simon did a series called On Father Wounds in the early days of Avuno Church, that I really had to do a lot of letting go, mm. forgiving. And it, it, it was, you know, there's sometimes when you forgive and then you're like, I don't even want to go to her because I don't think the issue was her. I think it's me. And the way I reacted yeah. to what she said. Because yeah. I couldn't see and say, I couldn't go back to her and say, you are strong-willed, that's why I was... I was like, you know what, she is, that's who she is. Mm. And I think it was my reaction. But it was interesting that on Sunday as we prayed, I yeah. just felt a lift in mm. that. And I feel like the Holy Spirit just began to show me the beauty of who my mom is. Mm. And the her, her weakness as a person, just as a human being, as somebody who God loves. And I remember Pastor Angie, as we, as we were praying, I think you're the one who led that prayer for parents. I don't, I, I don't know if it was you or me, but I remember somehow in that, just feeling a sense of lightness. That's beautiful. Feeling a desire to just honor my mom and to bless her. And so, I mean, even inviting them today, Carol can tell you, it wasn't part of our plan. It was just like, let's invite my folks. Oh, wow. I just feel like I want to, I, it's like I don't have long with them and I'm privileged yeah. that they're still alive. Yeah. And so I just felt, and you know, as Tim shared his testimony about how he would want to mm. connect more with his dad even after the offense, and now he can't. Yeah. So I just feel like God just gave me a desire to hang out with my parents more, and especially my mom. Uh, so there's a freedom for even for me as a pastor as I yeah. preach this word. And I love it because you brought out mother wounds, which are not are rarely spoken about. No, but I found it's uh, there are people here with mother wounds. Yeah, by very way. many. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, it's not just father wounds in that house. <laughs> We also have thing. some tough mamas. Yeah. And I'm one of, one of, and you're, one you're of those mamas. I'm a you, tough so mama. Pray for you. <laughs> so when but you're talking, now, I'm praying for myself. I'm <laughs> like, Lord, help me. <laughs> but I, I think for me, it also makes you sensitive because you start to realize, yeah, you could also cause, and we prayed for parents. Yeah, yeah. Because it's very easy for you to also cause offense to your children. Yeah. While you're still reacting to your parents' yes. offense, you yes. know. So I think there's a humility when you start to let go of your parents yeah. that allows you to feel, if I can forgive them, Hopefully, it gives me the grace as I deal with my kids because one day I might need forgiveness from exactly, these very same ones. Exactly. Yeah. It was such a powerful moment, just that releasing and letting go yeah, of yeah. parent ones. Yeah, Pastor Sheila says she, she watched that service and she says uh, it, it was just amazing for her. Uh, Brian Okot says the prayer was therapeutic, I'm telling you. Uh, yeah, Pastor Sheila says the prayer service was amazing. I'm feeling much lighter. I, I just want to, to uh, affirm. Yeah. That's how I felt as mm. well. And I just feel like many people just left that service feeling lighter, you know. Uh, Godwin says those uh, testimonies were off the hook. And mm. I completely, completely agree with that. Uh, John says, I'm a father. I treat my son with so much love. How much more from my father in heaven to me? Imagine. And that's that's. So it's a good. beautiful thing. I think what I love is the celebrating of reconciliation in families. Yeah. And just a letting go and a lightness. And a joy so that you can call your parents home, you can visit them and bless them yeah. uh, without carrying all that baggage. Amen. Yeah. So we've been talking about honor, honoring parents. Some of you have been doing out of obedience. My prayer is through this series, you're going to move out of just obedience to Into delight. Love. Yeah. You know, to actually wanting to do it from the bottom of your heart because you can see how, how it just is a beautiful thing. And how they, have, they deserve the honor. Mm. Uh, they may, you may not have thought that when they're younger, but it's like, yeah, they're my parents. God has given them that role honor is due to them. I love it. Yeah. It's a beautiful And thing. then we move to marriage. Mm. And again, my God, I mean, that testimony by Des, Papa Des. was so amazing. Huh? I mean, just, it, it was just some of Uno testimony. <laughs> <laughs> it was so complicated. It was. <laughs> you know, because he's not saying, it's not one of those, things worked, but everything has worked out happily ever yeah. after. It's like there's a mess yeah. that is left behind because of the, the decisions we made in our marriage, the decisions I made in my first marriage. Yeah. And now he's looking back wistfully and saying, I wish I knew the things I know now. If I knew what, then what I know now. So marriage offense happens, yeah. you know, and I know that uh, it's not, you guys have been married just a few years, so maybe you've never offended each other. Uh. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> eight years. <laughs> eight years is eight years is enough to offend someone. Yeah. I think. Uh, the guys on honeymoon on this call have no clue, no clue about it. But uh, I think for us, twenty-eight years. Uh, it's, there are many it's, opportunities. It's enough. We have enough <laughs> opportunities. 
uh, to offend each other. And for Pastor Kara and I, I mean, I, I think somebody once told us those early days, marriage is made of two good givers and two good forgivers. And I don't even think I understood what they were saying that time. Mm. It's like, it's about forgiveness. I mean, it's about, there are times I even used to feel I have to process every offense with heart before I let it go. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's like, I have to first of all yeah. process, then whoever was wrong says, I'm sorry, then now we can move on. I actually think it's a choleric thing. Uh, it's a choleric like, thing. It is an injustice <laughs> that you should not you know need, how you I'm should feeling. Have known. Yes. Yeah. So I need to first let you yeah. know, and then we process, then, we then process. you apologize, I apologize, <laughs> and we... Do you know, it's so funny because <laughs> I think I've reached a place in life where I'm like, nowadays I have my own conversation, Yeah. I process, I feel deal with my feelings, I forgive her, I'm like, Lord, I even know she didn't mean what she was saying, yeah. and I'm like, let's move on, you know? But it takes... I think by the time you, you get over that hump, Pastor M, it's such a hard space to be in. Yeah. I, I remember telling you guys, we went on a holiday with my husband, a romantic holiday in the mountains, cold, in a cabin where you cannot escape. And then we had the biggest fight. <laughs> you and I couldn't run anywhere. So we just sat there staring at each other yeah. like I was wailing and he was just staring at me like i didn't even know we had issues <laughs> oh, was, so you didn't even know you had issues no i knew we had okay, issues yeah. he didn't know he was oh. like oh our marriage is okay and so he was confused like i attacked him from everywhere it was such an interesting um experience yeah. but then in that moment we fought and said we're gonna we made a decision to fight for our relationship and to work through it and to overcome i mean i feel like after that it just got easier um, um, our marriage just got easier. We, we strengthened each other. We built each other. But that season was hard. I, I'm glad you said season because it's very easy for people to hear that testimony and just assume, okay, they had a disagreement and then they lived happily ever after. But I don't think that's what you're saying. No. I think what, when I hear the word season, I hear there are times when you felt helpless. Yes. There are times when you wondered whether you're going to make it. Yeah. There are times when you are fearful. Yes. about how this thing was going to end and i and i feel like that's something so important because when i when us guys were when we were newly married i was confused because nobody in the christian church was talking about the fact that marriage was hard yeah when i was single everybody was just showing us the nice things like everything everybody just looks happy they have jesus they, show up they have Sunday. halos they show yeah. up in church they're holding hands they're smiling so i just thought <laughs> that's how life is supposed so. to be then i realized you don't marry an angel because you know we used to call each other angel when you're dating my mm. angel how are you there are no angels in uh, angels don't get married yeah. they're in heaven yeah <laughs> it's sinners who get married yeah. you married a sinner and you're a sinner as well and it it takes marriage you know they say love is blind marriage is an eye opener it just opens your eyes to realize how wicked you are yes and then how wicked your spouse is yeah. and of, of course you first see the wickedness in and your then, spouse and then before you see us. you start seeing your own issues and so it's interesting because you've been married eight years. I've been married 28. Somebody over here who's maybe just beginning the journey yeah. might be in a space where they're feeling stuck yeah. or feeling so much pain. And it's like, this can't work. And maybe you look at other people and think they have hope because maybe they had some things worked for them. It can't work for us. But I feel like this thing of offense can be overcome by every couple. I loved what Des said in that video because he said, if I knew what I knew now, I'd still be married to my yeah. first wife. I mean, that was a very profound thing to say. Uh, if I leave this one and go to another one, I'm still going to have to deal with the offenses we bring to each yeah. other, learn to forgive, learn to let go for our marriage to work. And it's not going to be automatic. It is. And it's, it's about work, working on each other, working on yourself. I think it's, I think what I understood is when you, when you say uh, at the aisle or at the church, when you say, um, you know, for better, for worse and sickness, you don't realize you're taking the worst. <laughs> of the person <laughs> like you've accepted them and yeah. and all their habits and all their you know their wrong beliefs or even their what's it called their failures their weaknesses and then you see and you commit to building each other and they take you so i think when you have that perspective you you're more gracious you're more open to growing and um and then it really becomes about you you be you determine to become the best for your spouse yeah. and so you determine to say let me learn like i, I t keep telling people i'm a student of my husband so let me study him he's a student of me but we're committed to helping each other grow now it is a hard decision once you overcome that lump yeah but it doesn't mean we we don't you have to have those moments of growing of learning committing and the season and the there's season. a season when things just are hard yeah and it happens for every marriage and it's not a day it's not a week it's mm, not a year mm. it's years and the thing that keeps you going is if you know every other couple goes through this 
and we are determined that we will make it. You will make it. So despite the offense, despite the hardships, we will make it. This is a stage every other couple has gone through. I yeah. think that's the thing that saved our marriage. When I began to realize, you know, every other couple offends each other. Every other couple loses the spark. Everybody. And if, by the way, if anybody hasn't lost a spark and you know them and they've been married 10 years, start praying for them seriously. Because to me, my honest thinking is there's something called denial. You yeah. have not gotten deep. You, you haven't yet deep. Understand, understood who the other person is. I think the, the, the other big thing is determining to grow together. So that thing of um, being honest, having the courage to be honest with one another, to be real and raw, and then the, the courage to, to be in spaces where you grow. So whether it's sharing with someone, whether it's, um, what's it called, going to Ndoat, attending a class or something, just to help you, even going for counseling, to help you process that thing so that you grow yeah. and come out of it, so that you let go of offense. I'll tell you guys how, because I'm strong, and I can overwhelm my husband with my words. I literally have to bite my tongue when I need him to share with me where I've offended him. So that also I learn. So I don't, I don't keep repeating the behavior. So we go for dinner and I, I'm telling you I keep myself busy. I eat, I bite my tongue so that I grow. Because wow. uh, you know me, I can talk forever. And, and I have a comeback for every life. So first of all, you're a choleric. Yes. And then secondly, I hear women have like three times the amount of words men Yes, have. yes, yes, yes. And so personally. by the time you exhaust... So how do you keep those words back? I eat. I'm doing that day in Or I bite my tongue well, literally to, li speak. to let him speak. Because I have 10 comebacks when he's, when he's speaking. So learning uh, yourself, giving your person the opportunity to share. And then saying it's really also recognizing it's not, it's not just about you. You have a thing you want to build. You have a life you want to build together. Be committed to that. Um, determined to grow to become that. And it's just... That letting go, Pastor M, their conversations, I have let go of. I'll never ask my husband again. And I've told him, I'll ask you this time, if you don't resolve it, I'll let go of it. And I let go. Wow. And that is the hardest That's thing. Hard. Especially for me who can process four, five years. I'm like, I've let go of a story, of a thing we discussed before we married, and, and I've let it go. It's, a, it's something. Wow. But I've, I've determined for the, this thing that we're building, that can't destroy it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I think what we're saying, guys, is marriage is hard and offense is easiest. Yes. Uh, proximity and authority, directly proportional to offense. We, we learned that. Mm. And so, just the proximity of marriage just makes it so, so easy for offenses to pile up. And if you're in that space where you've been feeling desolate, you've been feeling lost, uh, don't give up on your marriage. Get the help you need. Uh, sometimes the, the other partner is not even ready to get help. Mm. So what do you do? You get help for yourself. That's right. Start working on you. Start building you, and start growing. Yeah. Start getting to the place where you begin to understand your part in it. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing: I always find out when I counsel couples. Uh, the person who brings the issue always tells me first about what their spouse has done. He never communicates. He's bad with money. He's done this and this. And usually at that point, you're completely blind mm. to your part. Mm. Your your part in this. Marriage is a two-way street. And it, it doesn't matter how, what your spouse has done, you've also contributed something to that, to that mix. Yeah. And I feel like that what God begins to do is when you, start, when you stop looking at them, uh, in Doha we say, work on me, pray, pray for, them. for them. You know, stop working on them and praying for me. Yeah. That doesn't work and yeah. it never works. But if I can start working on, on me, the one, thing I, the one person I can change, and then praying for them and trusting God, as you say, letting them go. Yeah. But then trusting God to change me. That I have control over and I become a pleasant person. And maybe that's what my spouse needed, was a pleasant person to yeah, be married to. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, so I feel like what we're saying is don't let offense come in. And I think what Des gave us was a great warning. Uh, those of you who are maybe on a one-way ticket out of your marriage right now, you will have to go through, it's like you're leaving Sonat 5 and you're going back to nursery school with another spouse in the, in, the, in the future. And you will still have to learn the lessons to be able to overcome the hump you have. So this is a time for you to fight for it and don't Amen. let it go. Amen. Yeah. Beautiful. This one's hard. Yeah, I can't wait to hear the testimonies though. God will do something. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And Amen. for those who are single, right now you don't get any of this because you're probably looking at Pastor Angie and saying, and myself and saying, hey, you pastors us. You have so many <laughs> issues. Like, how would you have such problems? I like, know. for me, of course, I'll never have such problems. I'm going to find the one, bride. the perfect person. Yeah. And of course, I'm making fun of you. But I know that deep inside your mind, you're probably thinking <laughs> it's an exception for you. There isn't. But here's what I'm saying. What, it, the, right now when you're single you can start working on you yeah you know becoming the best you that you can possibly be and one of the warnings I, i've always wanted to give people because you know whenever you're in the door class 
uh, we have what we call disclosure. Yeah. And disclosure is when you start talking about the decisions mm. you made in the past and disclosing it all so that you start with yeah. a clean slate with your yeah. spouse. And I find so many people who say, I wish I didn't have to tell my spouse this. Yeah. Like, I wish I hadn't made this decision mm. before. Uh, I wish I hadn't, you know, because you did things when you're single that you regret now to share when you're married. Mm. And I know couples who decided this is too much. I don't want to lose the person. I won't tell them. And then he caught up a few years yeah, later. Yeah. And so this is a time to work on you as a single person. Don't wait and say, okay, let me, when I get married, then I'll, this part will be relevant for me. It's like, how do I start to work on me so I become the best version of myself before I enter into a relationship with mm, someone else? Mm, yeah. I love it. That's beautiful. So, so yeah, so that was marriage and then community. Hey, that one got real. Community was real, huh? You know, Jackie shared a story about how she has this child and her child has uh, a mental yeah, condition he has autism and how the community has said such things mm. and you know the funny th the sad thing for me is she wasn't talking about when i was in another church before i came to mavuno uh -huh, church. Uh -huh. people used to say this to me <laughs> she, she was talking about, about her whole story was well i've been in mavuno <laughs> and she even gave a story of how a pastor came and spoke words yeah, to her prayed and, for her and, and so prayed to her and just told her something very inappropriate at that time yeah and Pastor Angie, I kid you not, I looked around, I think all the pastors were like, I hope that wasn't me. I hope that wasn't You're me. You're going I'm back in there. memory. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy. We, we offend people all yeah, the time yeah. as a community. And she talked about how kid, our parents in Mavuno Kids would yeah, sort come, of to her. come to her with like, what, what are you doing about your... It's like yeah. they don't they even take time to ask questions. They come and report what he has done. And not take time to even ask what's mm, happening. Is mm. there something going on that we should... So. I think it was, I mean, in her sense, there was such a, a strong sense where it's very easy for the community to offend you. Yes. And I know so many people, and I, I'm sure you do as a pastor, who have left church, mm. even left Mavuno, because they were offended by yeah. something a pastor said, a pastor did, a church member did, their life group did, uh, something that was done to them or said to them by somebody in the mm. church. And you know, the crazy thing is our expectations when we're in the church are here. It's like you're a believer, you're a son of God, you're like, you should never, you should do, this. never do this. Yeah. When I'm in the world, my expectations are mm. here, so I have much more grace. grace. Mm. But when something happens in church, people, people walk off in a half, yeah. and there's such anger. And, they walk off in offense. And, and so I suspect there are some people even who are watching this who may even just be on their journey back uh, into church community because you got so offended. And I hear so many people say, I love Jesus, but I hate people. Yeah. I, hate I hate his people. I hate his people. You know, I can't stand the church. So I don't know, what do you tell people like that? I mean, I love Jackie's story because she said she really separated issues. And she said she allowed God to speak to her, spe spoke to her still in the same church, at the back of the church. Yes. She was determined to still meet her God. So she placed herself in the place where he loves, which is his church. And he met with her and then she still serves in the church completely. And I think her story is that she has opportunity to be offended every day. Because yep. her son still has autism, yep, yep. her son uh, still, uh, you know, does uh, crazy things, and but he's, um, I mean, he's an amazing person, and Jack is an amazing person. But having to live, letting go every day, because for her it's an everyday thing. Every sometimes day. Uh, this week it has been every day. I'm her prayer partner. It has been every day. Um, she's had to let go of offense every day. But I think that the beauty of it is seeing how God works in you that he changes your perspective to realize it's really not people. God is still moving. The beautiful thing is God has always chosen to work in and through people. Mm. In fact, I keep telling God, this would be so much simpler if you just came down by fire in everybody's home <laughs> and spoke to them. Let's remove the people equation. But the truth is, Pastor, you hurt me. I hurt you. Yeah. Um, but God has chosen his primary means of communication to still be through people. Um, and work through people. So I think that once she overcame that barrier, God has really worked in her life and through her and birthed a ministry out of her, out of her that even people even now can come pain. to church. Out of that pain. And now people come to church. And her ministry, to be specific, is a ministry for people whose children yes. have autism. Children, so family members. she's now reaching members, to people who have yeah. been offended by the church in the past, who haven't known how to be in a church. And she's the one including them yes. now. She has over 100 people that meet monthly. They're actually meeting this Saturday at, uh, at CID uh, for a, a morning meeting. And she's birthed a thing out of this pain and teaching people how to live offense-free, how to still invite God 
to move in your life, to work in your life. Um, so despite what people have said to you, despite what the government has said, the education, your school, your teacher has said, the principal has said, learning to live offense-free because, like she says, maybe they don't know yeah. better. Yeah. Um, maybe they are trying their best, but just isn't good enough yeah. at this point. Yeah. What I love about her now, I keep telling her, you're the church. So she can say that I said, no, now you're the church. The you church tell us. No, now you're the church. Yes, I'm like, now you no, tell us, up the game, up yeah. the standard for people so that you can say, we, are the, we as a church need to do better uh, because the opportunity for offense is there yeah. every day. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Let me just say, um, if you know somebody who was in your discipleship group a long time ago, a life group, and is no longer coming to church, maybe they had offense. I love what Pastor Angie said, we are the church. Mm. and maybe you've been saying they have issues with the church and disconnecting yourself from that church but maybe it's time for you to actually reach out to them and start to embrace them as a church start to bring them back into fellowship uh, the devil uses offense to cut people off and I know people who are so so integral so engaged in church mm. and now they're on the bench yeah you know they they maybe watch online TV and they're happy to be in, to say I'm a church mm. at least I listen to church but listening to church and being at, in church, uh, being church is it's two different. different things. And maybe this is a word for us uh, from what Jackie shared to just be, how do we include those offended people as well and bring them to the center. But for those of you who've also been in a space where you've been offended, uh, I know as we've talked about this, I've had several people in Mavuno come up and say, Pastor M, you offended me when you did this. Mm. Or Pastor M, I, I felt hurt when you did this. And they're not saying it to put me on the spot or to shame me. They're saying it because it's been something that's kept me away from you. It's something that's just kept a distance from us. And I wanted to just resolve that and say, I don't know, I don't even know what caused it, but for, I forgive you. I release that offense. And you know what? I'm so happy when people have done that. Sometimes I've been able to say, I had no clue that that's what you were thinking. I had no intention of doing that. And other times I've said, actually, yes, I did that. And I'm sorry, you know? Yeah. But I think it's so important for us not to carry... I, I, I don't know, maybe it's just that thing of not wanting to walk on eggshells. Yeah. And I feel like for me, if God is really working to bring a revival in this season, I don't want to be the, the one who stops that revival. That's right. I don't right. want to be that person who watches as other people are being blessed because I have something that is keeping me away from God's destiny for me. And so I'm just in the business now, by the way, of just having short, short accounts. Pastor Angie says something in our meeting that just yeah. hurt me. Yeah. I don't wait for... Let me think about this for then. I, I go right then. Yeah. And I'm like, Pastor Angie, you said this. I'm sure you didn't mean it. Or maybe you did, but tell me what you meant. Yeah. It really yeah. hurt me, you know? And just giving people an opportunity to to resolve, for us to resolve issues quickly. Yeah, I think it, it does take some level of courage and boldness, which is where the church of God needs to get to, where you're, you're bold enough uh, to believe that we can be better and, and to believe that... Um, God has placed you in this place, in this community for a reason. Yeah. So I remember just the other day at the gathering, <laughs> I came into, after the gathering prayers, I went to Pastor M in the middle of the night, it was late in the night, I said, Pastor M, I have an opportunity to carry offense. That was yes. my line. So I told him this, I have talked between us, and I said, I have the opportunity to carry offense. I said, this issue, tell me where we are and help me have some closure. And so he just updated me. In fact, I realized, man, it was nothing to be offended by. So, yeah, uh, and he just yeah. calmed me down. But if I had kept quiet, maybe even now I'd have been here just chew, chewing just dancing, having this conversation and then yeah. rolling my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, even when we said this, it is Pastor Emma, I was, t I was telling you how I feel. I said, saying, yeah, this is for the church. God is speaking, thinking it's not for me. I'll be praying for the church. It's about me, <laughs> you know, and saying, God, help me live a life offense free. Yeah. And it's a daily thing. Uh, it's it's a daily thing where you realize there are things you've carried, you know, from way back when that are, are coming up and say, oh Lord, just remove that thing. As we become, as we, what is it called? He increases and I decrease. Yes. Then saying, part of the decreasing is letting go. Part of the decreasing is releasing this pain so that he may increase, that you have more joy, more freedom uh, to be a blessing. Yeah. 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 You know, and uh, uh, we, we, we're coming to an end here, but you know, part of it is also we process things differently mm. depend on, depending on your personality. You and I are similar personality, Abisa. which I think makes it very easy for you to come and tell me, Pastor M, mm. what's up? <laughs> but I remember talking to one of my friends who is more melancholic, and he's a very deep guy. 
and so he takes a lot of time to process. You mm. say this word here, mm. Mm. and he's the guy who will even tell you. You say Is this in February. That you're no, about? it was <laughs> about your husband. She was joking. But you know, I'm just talking about the melancholic in the group. Yeah. And this guy is just like you say this in February, <laughs> and I've been mulling over it, mm. and I'm like. Mm. Like I even forgot what I said last week. You I know, I'm a such a word, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, and so one of the things I had to tell him is, please don't mm. keep long accounts mm. with me because mm. by next week I'll have forgotten what I told That's you. That's right. And so I, I said, I don't, I don't mull over things. Mm. I don't. And you know, when you're when you're deep like that, you assume automatically everybody's like you. Yeah. Everybody, because for somebody like that, they will take time before they think through the words. So Keep by the time they're saying you. something, they really have thought yeah, through it. Yeah. And then you assume everybody up around you is the same. Mm. And when you come to clarify, you realize they're not even thinking about what they say. Mm. It wasn't even what they meant. And so I feel like it's so important for us to just have short accounts yeah. and just be able to say, let me just resolve it quickly and see what God does. My, my theory is if you hurt me, I want to give you a rope yeah. immediately. Yeah. And the rope is the one you're either going to use to pull yourself out of the hole you dug yourself in mm. or to hang yourself. And the way you hang yourself is when you tell me, Pastor Ian, it's true. I mm. hate you. Like mm. what I thought. <laughs> like Pastor Angie, I thought you were saying you hate me. Yes, I hate you. Then I'm like, okay, keep my distance because it's true. Or you could, mo- which is what happens most of the time, say, I had no idea that's yeah. what you thought. Yeah. I didn't even mean that. Yeah. And many of, many of times, you, most times I throw a rope to somebody, they'll use it to pull themselves mm. out. And so I think I want to just challenge us as a church. Let's keep short accounts, guys. I think for us to be able to live this life of honor in our marriages, to live this life of honor in our community, we will offend us, each other. The more God is drawing us into becoming a family, the closer we're becoming in our relationships, in our discipleship groups, the more chances that we will offend each other. And the solution is not to keep arm's length or to defend ourselves and not get close. I think that the, the, the decision we have to make is the one that I think Jackie challenged us on Sunday, uh, that you make a predetermination. Yeah, yeah. That I may not know what this person is doing right now, but I trust their heart. Yeah. And so I choose to forgive. Even before we talk, I already yeah. know I'm going to forgive them. Yeah. And that just makes every conversation start from a very different perspective. Now, I want us to pray. And uh, Pastor Angie, there's been some good things here. Say, there's somebody who said, Pastor Angie, you've just opened my eyes. I think she's a choleric ah. uh, wife. So she's like, oh my gosh. Yes, mm. Pastor Angie, you're mm. speaking my <laughs> language. Uh, somebody else talked about the fact that this thing you said about God using your pain to start a ministry. Yeah. I think that really yeah. spoke yeah. spoke to them. Um, uh, somebody said, uh, Pastor Godwin said, work on me. Pray for them. This is one lesson that has changed my marriage uh, for the better. Uh, I think Phoebe said, as a person, a member of the community, I'm guilty. And I didn't even know it. <laughs> and you know, many times in the community, we're guilty. We had people without even knowing it. Yeah. And the key thing is we need to just be in that humble place where we are. When somebody confronts us, we're not defensive. Yeah. And we understand. I may not have meant to, but it caused offense. So I'm yeah. apologizing. I apologize. And uh, freeing you from that. So, so great, great uh, comments from people. Maybe we can just speak a prayer. Uh, blessing now as we bless the community and as people discuss this in our coming uh in our in our times let me just first of all remind us fearless don't leave this place and forget fearless uh book it now uh this is the time to do it uh make you pay your deposit and just get in there because this is a time for you to just secure that 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 thing and then we're starting uh, i mean this this june uh basically this june it's me and you so you're going to be the one helping us unpack some of what god is saying in this season uh, you're going to be preaching in the online service as well. Whoop, whoop. Uh, and we're still continuing with this series. I think it's like God is saying, uh-uh, you're not done yet. There's still <laughs> issues for there us to There are many deal issues. With. So if you're at the place where you're like, okay, finally, offense is over. No, 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 no. No offense continues uh, in June. And it's such a good outreach series. I really mm. feel this is a series that is relevant across the board. So please, just determine to invite your neighbors. Invite your friends. Invite them for family night as well. Invite them for service. And let's just have this conversation that is going to bring freedom to people around us. Amen. So, Pasi, I don't know how, as the, ho- as the Holy Spirit is leading us right now, maybe you could just pray. Pray, I for, can the, pray. for those people out there, those wives who are being challenged, those husbands. I want to uh, wanna challenge everybody as you go into your DG, have courage and boldness to really dig deep and say, where are you, what is, where are you carrying offense? And have courage and boldness to share it with someone. 
and I feel like this series is really about freeing our futures because in this space, in this church, I believe that there are Josephs, I believe that there are Davids that are going to lead in specific spaces. Yeah. But for that to happen, we have to let go of offense over spiritual parents, parents, over our spouses, over community, people that have offended us, that are holding us back. And so I want to pray for courage and boldness for you, even to just share, even if you're not able to completely let go, but to say in this area, in this thing, I have held offense. Mm. Courage and boldness to just share it with your DG. Share with somebody in your church and say, this is the thing. Let me pray. Amen. Father, thank you so much for family night. Thank you that we can come and share together and grow together as a community. Thank you for every man and woman in this church, in this community. Thank you that you have enabled us to engage with this series so we may move into the spaces that you have desired for us to move into. Mm -hmm. Thank you for reminding us that no demon, no human can stand in the way of what you have destined for us. Only I have the power to do that. And so I pray a release of courage and boldness over us as a community that we may have courage to share to explore ourselves and to share with somebody where we have held offense even if we're not re ready at this point to let go but to share and say this is the issue this is the thing i have identified that this is the space that i feel hurt and offended most and then i pray father a release of your holy spirit into every dg upon every heart that that you would speak to them about letting go i love this series of offense because really it is about you working in us there are no seven steps to forgiveness there are no seven steps to release it's about the holy spirit ministering to us our souls personally and so i speak a release of your spirit upon everybody that you would begin to move them from a place of pain to a place of release and love and joy and favor that we may occupy the spaces you yourself have desired for us to occupy when you thought about us before we were born in our mother's wombs so father I speak a release of your presence, of your anointing, and even as I make this prayer, I wait with expectation for exciting DG conversations, for a mighty move of God, for a release of heaviness over people's hearts, for a release over people's marriages, that in community people will connect at the next level. I wait with expectation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Wow, what a great evening this has been. Oh my goodness. I mean, the YouTube guys are saying we should extend because they came in late. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> they got lost, but Google Maps got them lost. <laughs> but we're so glad you guys made it. And we will actually post the, the whole, for those of you who missed it, we'll, we'll make sure we post uh, the beginning part as well. Yeah. Uh, but Pastor Angie, I'm looking forward to June. And hey, uh, our DG is doing a trip this week. Yay. We're going to Mombasa to Tomorrow. help open Mavuno Mombasa. <laughs> Thank you from Mavuno Mombasa. We're coming to you this weekend. Yeah. It's actually going to be the formal launch of Mavuno yeah. Mombasa. Yeah. Uh, so if you're in Mombasa, uh, give us a holler, give us a shout. We'd love to give you Google Map directions to where yeah. we're going on Sunday. And uh, so we're really looking forward to that. I, I can't, can't wait, wait for the road trip. I can't wait. Uh, so guys, uh, God bless you. Have a fantastic time discussing this in your discipleship groups. And uh, wow. It's going to be sizzling. June it's is going to be, be amazing. We're starting with Mombasa. It's we're, going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so God bless, guys. See Have you a next fantastic, week. fantastic evening. See you next week. All right.